having you know made this buffer, you can refer to that buffer more than once. So we could now, oops, unlock the patch. We could now say, right, well, I want another delay to come out of there at three seconds, and another one at five seconds, and another one, say, at seven seconds. And when you do that, you get some additional inlets. Now, those aren't for putting any signal data into. Those are for updating the, uh, the, the arguments you've got. So the first inlet will update the 2,000, second inlet will update the 3,000, and so on. Um, but the outlets are for audio data, so that's the, the, your first, your 2,000 worth, 2,000 milliseconds worth of delayed sound will come out of this one. 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, uh, sorry, 5,000 and 7,000 7, coming out of those outlets there. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is instead of going into there, just for efficiency, I'm going to make a gain control, and we will connect that. To there, and then to there, to there, oops, to there, to there, and to there. So now we get the original one, two seconds later, three seconds later, five, five seconds later, and seven seconds later. Um, so you can put in as many delays as you want to. So we made a, a sort of multi-tap delay with by combining a, vi a series of a pipe objects. Well, you could do the same thing with these uh, this um, tap out object, but obviously within the same um, object, you just add additional arguments. Um, now we can make that a bit more uh, useful to us by, well, first of all, we might want to add a kind of control to change the length of these delays but we might also just as we did with the uh, pipe object um, in conjunction with the uh, make note and note out objects we might also want to have a kind of attenuation or control different uh, amplitudes of each of those delays so to do that I'm gonna uh, I can't remember whether I've covered this before so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself but what we'll use is the multi-slider object. Now the multi-slider object is kind of handy. Uh, you can have, well, as the name suggests, multiple sliders within a single object. So, I, and I can't remember, there was a time when I think it was 20, 256 you could have, and I think it's now 512, I can't remember, but you can have a lot of sliders all within a single object, which means you can, you can kind of drag, uh, well, let's, let's, let's put in some, uh, where are we looking, no, no, where does it say, number of sliders, there you are, so we could put in, say, 200 sliders into there, just, just, just to show you, and if I drag it out, um, then each one of these things, it looks like a table graph, um, and in fact multi-slider can be used as a kind of table, uh, but in fact each one of those is a slider, and what it will output from the left-hand outlet when you, when you do that, let's add a message box there, when you, um, you notice that it's, it sends out a list of numbers for each of those sliders that it's got in there and those can be sent to wherever you want, really. So in this instance, we've got four delays that we want to update. As I say, we might want to be able to update them all at the same time. So we will go back into our inspector and just say we want four sliders. And the range of those sliders we want to be between 0 and 10,000 because we've got a delay buffer of 10,000 milliseconds. Um, and I think actually that's all we need. Oh, the, the only other thing that we might want to do, you might have noticed that I, uh, when I click on here we get one output, but it doesn't change until I release the, uh, the mouse, at which point the, um, the data is sent out of the left-hand outlet. But we might want a continuous date, data output, um, and to do that we just need to go to... Oops, we need to go to... Here we are, continuous data output. 
And you can also choose whether you want it to be integer or floating point. Well, actually, we only want it to be integer. It doesn't really matter for the purposes of this, but uh, we only want an integer output, so we can put it at that. So now when I move this, you'll notice that whenever I hit a new slider, there is new information um, sent to the message box. Um, and of course, because it's coming out as a list, um, we've got four outputs there. All we need to do is unpack that data, one, two, three, four, and send it into each one of those inlets for the tap out object. And we can use this multi slider to control the various delays of the tap out. Now, I don't really need that anymore, so I'll get rid of that. And of course, we can use the same kind of uh, thing to control the uh, levels of each of those delays. So if I, out of there, run each of those outputs into a multi uh, yeah, multiplication tilde object, Just a little tip, actually, if you didn't see what I did there. Um, let's say I make, an, make a, a, a multiplication tilde object, and I want to duplicate it at the same distance, so, so that they're all equidistant. Then I can use my usual click, alt, and drag to a certain point. And then if I press Control and D with a duplicate command, then it will duplicate at the same distance that I made the last object which can be kind of handy so anyway um i digressed so now we go into here and into here and into here and here um, and we can simply duplicate this unpack object except of course that now we're dealing with floating points because we want to go between 0 and 1 for each of those taps. So I would need to add a point to each of these to make them floating point. And this I would now need to be uh, in floating point for the sliders. And I would want them to go between 0 and 1. I mean, you might want to get them to go uh, higher than 1, but for the time being we'll leave it at 1. So, I mean, you could then kind of design your interface so that it's intuitive that this slider refers to this slider in terms of uh, the delay length and the um, attenuation. But uh, that should now work. So if we you know, just pop in a few delays there and then they get quieter over time. Ish. Oops. Voila, it worked. Um, and of course, you know, you could arrange that so that it, it works within some kind of beat pattern if you wanted to. Um, now, I've only been dealing with clicks, but of course, you can just you just put in a um, an SF play object or something with some sounds that you know you want to put in there. And uh, um, yeah, um, you can you can work on that basis. So that's a kind of multi tap delay. Um, I've obviously gone well over my Yes, I've got well over ten minutes for YouTube, so I'll have to I'll have to edit this and then um, come back and do um, a kind of feedback delay.